my beautiful lovelies, it's Emmy. Welcome back. Today's video is sponsored by Green Grow, the producers of 100% all natural organic soil amendments and fertilizers. If you want farm to table quality produce in your garden, be sure to click the link down below to receive a special discount. Big thanks to Green Grow for sponsoring this video. Now I'm going to show you today how to make my favorite pie and it is strawberry rhubarb pie. So if you follow me on social media, you've seen my strawberry rhubarb pies <laughs> because when strawberries and rhubarb are in, I'm making this pie because I love it. I'm not even a pie person. I just love this pie. So I have to thank my aunt Susie for inspiring me to make my first strawberry rhubarb pie. She sent me home with some fresh rhubarb from her beautiful rhubarb patch. And I said, what am I gonna do with this? So I made a pie and I said, this is the best pie ever. So a couple years ago, Aunt Susie divided her rhubarb and sent me home with an actual rhubarb plant. We planted it in our garden. It did beautifully. I harvested it and I made my own strawberry rhubarb pies. So last year we moved all of our raised beds, including our rhubarb patch. We just plunked it in the ground. I didn't even amend the soil like I should have adding some compost or anything. I didn't do anything. It just stuck in the ground and said, we'll just see what happens. So very happily, it came up in the spring. I'm like, okay, great. I can't wait till we get ourselves a decent rhubarb crop and I can make my first pie. Well, it just looks like a sad pile of rhubarb. Oh, Chucks, what are you doing? Chucks. Hi. What are you doing? I'm trying to get a shot of the rhubarb here, girls. So I ended up buying some at a farm stand instead to make my rhubarb pie. Now this is the first strawberry rhubarb pie of the season and I wanted to make it extra special for you guys. So I attempted my very first herringbone lattice crust. Now the first time I saw this pattern, I'm like, what? That is stunning. Now of course I'm following the great Stella Parks recipe, Brave Tart. If you don't know her, she published this book amazing so i followed her recipe for the pie crust and her tutorial on how to do the actual herringbone pattern which is challenging by the way alrighty so let me walk you through the steps of making the pie crust because you're going to need to make this in advance like always i'll put the links to all the original recipes in the description you're going to take 225 grams of all-purpose flour that's one and two-thirds of a cup and put that into a bowl add 15 grams of sugar or one tablespoon Add four grams of kosher salt or one teaspoon, and then use a whisk and whisk that up really well. Then you're gonna take two sticks of cold butter and cut it into half inch cubes. First cut it lengthwise, turn it, cut it lengthwise again, and then just chop it up into little cubes. Add the cold butter to the flour mixture, toss all the butter so it's coated in flour and separate the pieces. Now you're just gonna squish every cube of butter. Just take between your finger and your thumb and give it a good squish. Do that to all the cubes. Then you're gonna take 115 grams or a half cup of cold tap water, pour that in, stir it all up. Then you're gonna knead the dough against the sides of the bowl until it forms a shaggy ball. You're gonna liberally flour your countertop, place your shaggy dough on top of the flour and roll it out into like a rough 10 inch by 15 inch rectangle. You're gonna fold this into thirds, and then fold it into half. So for a typical pie that has a top and bottom, you're gonna cut it in half. But for this particular recipe, this is very lattice top heavy, so we're gonna cut it into 60-40 amounts. And you're gonna take the smaller portion of dough, and you're gonna roll it out into a rough circle and fill your pie plate. And because we're doing a lattice top and we want this to be nice and flat, you don't want there to be overhanging pastry crust. Now you're gonna take your larger piece of dough, again, on a very liberally floured surface. You're gonna roll that out to a 10 by 15 inch rectangle. Then you're gonna slice three quarter of an inch strips and you want 20 of these. So at this point, we place everything in the refrigerator and we need to let everything cool down and rest for at least two hours up to overnight. The next day, we're ready to assemble our pie. We're gonna preheat our oven to 425 degrees. And the recipe for the filling I'm using today is from this book. This is the classic joy of cooking. Love this book. 
So for the recipe for the filling is super simple. You just take two and a half cups of rhubarb. Because I'm doing this lattice, I want the surface to be very flat rather than being chunky and nubbly. So I cut the rhubarb pieces smaller. Typically you would cut them into one inch pieces. For this recipe, I cut them into half inch pieces. And you're gonna have an equal amount of strawberries, two and a half cups that have been hulled and cut again into approximately half inch pieces. Next, we're gonna add a quarter cup of cornstarch and one cup of sugar and a quarter teaspoon of salt. Mix this all really well and let that rest for about 15 minutes. We want the strawberries to really exude some of that juice. Then we take our refrigerated pie crust out and we're gonna place our filling in there. And then to help the crust stick to the bottom crust, I just wet the edge of the bottom crust a little bit with a bit of water. Next comes the weaving of the lattice. This is the first time I've attempted this pattern and it was certainly challenging, but I did eventually figure it out. I'll also put a link down below to Stella's very, very short video on how to do the herringbone pattern as well. We're gonna trim the edge with a knife. Then you take one egg and beat it up with just a little bit of water and brush that liberally on top. Make sure you line the bottom shelf of your oven and place your pie in there at 425 degrees for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, reduce the temperature of the oven to 350 degrees and allow it to bake for additional 30 minutes. Alrighty, so while the pie is baking, let me tell you a little bit more about Green Grow. So Green Grow are producers of soil amendments and fertilizers that are 100% all natural, organic, absolutely safe for your family, for yourself, and for your pets. I love that, I love that. Green Grow sent me this, this is Nature's Pride. This is their veg food. This contains beneficial mycorrhizae and probiotics. It uses no chemical additives, no chemical ingredients. It's completely all natural and it couldn't be easier to use. So I sprinkle this around my very sad rhubarb plant and in my raised beds. I just top dressed it, watered it down, and that's it. It couldn't be any easier. What separates these products from typical soil amendments or fertilizers is the fact that they contain probiotics, which are good beneficial bacteria, along with mycorrhizae, which are beneficial good fungi. Now the probiotics help with nutrient uptake and the mycorrhizae help with water management. So with those two things, you've got plants that are flourishing. If you're interested in farm to table quality produce in your own gardens, be sure to click the link down below to receive a discount. Big thanks to Green Grow for sponsoring this video. Now let's check on our pie. So this pie crust contains a lot of butter and the edges tend to brown very quickly. So toward the end of baking time, what you can do is you can use a little bit of foil to cover the edges so they don't get too dark. And the trick I like to do is I take a tart pan that has a removable bottom. I just sit this right on top of the pie and then it protects the edge a bit so it doesn't get overly browned. Take the pie out of the oven and allow it to cool completely before you attempt to cut this. If you cut it in the beginning, it's just gonna ooze all over the place. You need to let it cool and it's hard to wait, but it's definitely worth it. After all of that, you should have something that looks like this. Isn't it gorgeous? I am so happy about this. This is my first herringbone lattice ever, and it looks beautiful. I know. Alrighty, I can't stand this any longer. I've been waiting too long for this. Let's cut into this. It's just, this is gonna be good, I can tell. You can hear how flaky the crust is. Oh my God, can you hear that? It's so flaky. What do they call it, a pie server? I don't have a pie server, I should get one. Would that mean I would make more pie? Yeah, I probably would. All right, here we go. Oh. You are beautiful. If you don't wait for this to completely cool, this will ooze all over the place. But since you've given it some time, the cornstarch is actually set up a bit. So your filling actually retains some shape. Otherwise you'll have a pool of strawberry rhubarb pie everywhere, which is really actually quite nice. when you have a cold scoop of vanilla ice cream. But since I don't have a scoop of cold vanilla ice cream, I'm just gonna have my pie like this. <laughs> This looks amazing. All right, let's give this a cut. Oh my gosh, look at that. Top and bottom, there's my bottom crust. All righty, first pie of the season. Itadakimasu. Mm. 
Mm. So stinking good. So stinking good. The filling is so delicious. You've got such a great fresh strawberry flavor in there, but that rhubarb really makes it tangy and bright, but you've got a lot of sugar in there, so it still remains decadent and dessert-like, but it doesn't feel so heavy. Like some pies I feel like are just so cloyingly sweet. Not this one. It has a lot of sugar in it, but that rhubarb just makes this really plucky and bright and just, to me, tastes of summer. And this pie crust recipe, winner. Mm -hmm. And it's not surprising that it's good because it contains two sticks of butter. You've got that really flavorful, buttery flavor, and it's got a delectable texture to it. Look at this. Look, because we did a few folds, this is flaky. Look at that. Almost like a croissant. So delicious. Mm. New favorite pie crust. Mm -hmm. mm, mm, mm. Not only does it taste delicious, it's really easy to work with. It's very supple and pliant. So when you're doing an intricate top like this, it really works. You're not fighting with it, but it does contain a lot of butter, so it does soften really quickly. So if that happens to you, just quickly put it in the refrigerator, let it set up a little bit. Now, if you're allergic to strawberries or if you simply don't like strawberries, and of course don't eat this pie, but otherwise, just do it because it's so good. Mm-hmm, make it happy. It'll make me happy. Mm -hmm. mm. Alrighty, so there you have it. My favorite is pie ever, strawberry rhubarb pie. You've got the recipe, you've got the tools, make it for yourself. And thank you guys so much for watching and big thanks to Green Grove for sponsoring this video. If you want farm to table quality produce in your own garden, be sure to click the link down below to receive a special discount. Thanks again for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I hope you guys learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media, like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo, take care, bye. <laughs>